What's up, guys? This is Coach Donnie from Elevate Yourself, where we change lives through volleyball, training, and inspirational content. Welcome to my volleyball coach reaction to High Q Season 4, Episode 25. I can't believe we're finally on our last episode. This has been a two year journey, and some of you guys have been watching with me all the way from day one. So, special thanks for just being amazing fans and re-watching Haikyuu with me probably for your like 30th time and my first time and I'm really looking forward to watching it all over again. Some of you suggested that I re-watch it in the English dub version just to get a different experience as I watch it again. Now personally for me when I watch anime I always watch it in the original Japanese audio because I believe that the Japanese actors are way better at capturing the spirit of each character. But I think it would be fun to try out the English dub. So if you wanna vote on whether I should be watching the Japanese audio again or the English dub, you can vote for that on my Patreon where I'll be releasing the poll in about two or three weeks when I do plan on re-watching the whole series again. You'll also get early access to all my high cue reaction videos five days before it gets released to the public. You can sign up for my Patreon linked below. I knew that scene where Kageyama and Hinata felt familiar. It is truly poetic that everything came full circle and when Suki said that they cannot just depend on the free quick tempo hit. This is exactly what Suki meant. Another great character development was seeing the evolution of the relationship between Hinata and Suki where they were almost enemies from day one and all the way up until now they were still bickering and getting under each other's skin only to realize in the very end that Suki trusted Hinata to dig the ball if he just funneled the hitter in that direction. And that's the greatest victory of team sports in my opinion and why everyone should play some type of sport, especially team sports. These are the life lessons that you learn from playing in team sports. The ability to work with people that you don't like or usually don't get along with for a common goal or for the greater good of everyone else. Team sports teaches you how to be less selfless and how to work together with other people and you will never learn anything like that in the classroom. This scene where the twins were running that perfect minus free quick tempo also is one of my favorite scenes of the entire series. I actually rewatched that on my own after the reaction just to hear them say those words, this angle, this timing, it's perfect. You can just hear them gritting their teeth and I'll probably watch it some more again. Definitely one of the coolest scenes, just when you thought things were gonna get intense in that rally, it gets even more intense and you feel like, ooh, that's probably the best moment and then they find a way to elevate it even more to a whole another intensity and you're like gripping and ripping into your chair because you can't handle the intensity because the angle the timing it's all perfect last episode was definitely the most emotional and expressive i've ever been watching haikyuu that's how you know it was a good episode. I'm already going to this episode with a little bit of sadness because it's over, but I know that there's season five coming out. So let's just get this high cue party started. Oh yes, do we get to restart from that moment when they, they're saying it? Yes. I'm gonna say it with them. Minus temple. Ah, this position. This timing. This angle. It's perfect. Oh, ball spinning so fast in the hand. Impossible. Oh, man. I'm, I'm, I'm already getting goosebumps and the episode hasn't even started yet. And then this beautiful moment where you see the ball again falling out of bounds, but not from the camera view, but from the reflection of the eye. And those angelic voices in the background. Man. Should we rewatch it again? Yes, I think we should. My name is Tempo! Hi! Konoichi! I don't know if my Japanese is per oh, It is perfect. 
Man, I could watch that so many times, but <laughs> what if I did a full 40 minute reaction episode to rewatching that one scene <laughs> over and over again for 40 minutes? Would you guys watch that video if I did a whole 40 minute reaction <laughs> replaying that scene? <laughs> Let me know in the comments. <laughs> It would give me a chance to practice my Japanese in that moment though, because those words, they do sound better in Japanese. It's timing versus like, kono ichi, I don't know what the words are, but definitely better in Japanese. I apologize in advance, my allergies are extra bad today because it rained last week and now all the flowers are out. Now we finally get to enjoy the moment of the celebration. Ooh, dog pile! The two, Hinata and Kageyama, are just soaking it in. When are the tears gonna flow? Everyone's just waiting for the tears. Oh, even Tsuki. If Tsuki cries, I might cry. And that's our cue, let's go. Back to the gym for some more training. I wonder what Kenma's thinking. Like, is he envious of that moment? Does he want to work harder and play train harder for that moment? Let's see what Asumu says to Kageyama. Everyone's just taking it in and disbelief, both sides, winners and losers. <laughs> but that's also why they're pretty good because they experimented so much oh let's see if Kageyama finally gives him a compliment <laughs> oh still bickering till the end <laughs> let's see if they get invited to the national youth team Oh. Oh. Dr. Wiley. He gets to see Hinata succeed at the highest high school level. I can't wait to see what Dr. Wiley's response is because this is a big driver as to why Hinata is working so hard because people and coaches like him tell him that he's too short to do anything good on the court. Can't wait to see what his response is. Wait, I thought this was the finals. Interesting that the positions match up. Hmm, that's a respectful thing to say, like see you again, as in the next competition or at the training camp. Oh, that's a huge compliment from Atsumu. I'm going to be setting you one day. Hey, he's going to turn around and say that. <laughs> Let's look at that kicking technique here. If you guys remember from episode one or season one and two, I actually break down a lot of their martial arts techniques, like Kageyama's beautiful back kick, roundhouse, because I used to do a lot of martial arts and just how well animated those scenes are. But this is like really bad kicking technique, but I'm sure it's on purpose because they're just having fun here. Let's take a look. It's just like a jam, like jabbing him with his foot here. <laughs> That's like purposely bad animation to make it even funnier. Yeah, they gave their fans some entertainment. Yeah, having your audience giving you that extra 2-3% advantage. I want to see what Inari's fans are doing. Okay, so we do get to see them. <laughs> yes, the fans keeping them in check. 
and you can't talk back because you're a good Japanese kid. You can't talk back to your elders. Mm, this is a cool flashback. Yeah, of course, only Kita understands that. Wait, why do they have the names next to those women? Are they those the girlfriends? Oh, that's probably the names of the signs because the fangirls probably are cheering for the individual ones. One thing I think is really cool about this episode and something that I've noticed more in season four is you get this nice flow of dialogue where people are actually talking, having conversations, but you also get to see some of the internal dialogue that people are having. And it's not just on the court where you're making these game decisions, but truly people processing what is going on. And if I were to direct an anime like this or any anime i would have never thought about that to me i would think so simply because i'm not that great of an animation director or animator i would just think oh yeah we have people talking and that's it as a way to communicate information but what we've learned in season four especially is the anime is communicating to us through the audience like the cheering and then the education from the audience when people are explaining the game to each other and then through the internal dialogue of the players and the coaches and then the actual dialogue between people and then the flashbacks and then these still images that are communicating like memories so you're really getting information in like 10 12 different ways and that's really how we operate as humans right when we're walking around we don't always receive information when we hear people talking. We're processing body language, we're processing internal dialogue, and, and getting information in so many different ways. And that's probably why IQ feels so real, because they're somehow accurately communicating the human experience through a volleyball game. Ingenious, ingenious anime. Arigato gozaimasu! Let's see what the reporters say. Oh. I'm curious to see what the... I like that the head coach took responsibility. Mm, I like that coach. He took responsibility for the loss, but he also complimented the incredible effort of his players. <laughs> mm. Wow, so perceptive. Only apologize when you truly feel bad. Don't say it just to make yourself feel better. Mm. Yeah. Do that occasionally, but not all the time. Mm. Yeah, they met their match of these two people that could improvise just as well. Mm -hmm. That's the monster's ball. Either way. It just makes you want to be better and try harder. But... Ooh, Kita actually expresses some true emotion here. No regrets, that's the most important thing. I'm really enjoying this monologue from Kita and he kind of reminds me of Ushijima where pretty much everything he says is coming from a very true black and white place and so when he does show some emotion you know that's a really special moment because he's usually just stating the facts and so he also is processing things out loud as he's talking to his team and he's kind of leading his team on this journey of how to process this experience part of a leader's job is not just to lead people when they're on the court but also to lead them in losses after it happened. 
Imagine yourself, you worked hard all season and you're training for this one moment and that one moment doesn't work out how you want, you lose. You can just feel this incredible sadness for many, many days, sleepless nights. I remember my senior night in high school, we had a chance to make it to our first semifinals playoffs and we were playing a team that we already beat twice, Washington High School. And so like young stupid kids, we thought we were gonna beat them 3-0 like we did in the last two times. So we start to relax, they come back and they beat us the first set. Then we start taking it seriously. We win the second set. And then we go on to lose the next two sets and we lose in four. On, did I say senior night? I meant to say on the playoff match. And that was one of the hardest losses in high school because we had a chance to really make some huge strides in our program, but we weren't mature enough to handle that moment. After that loss, everyone came to my house. And usually after games, we have food, we play some poker, play video games. We just hang out in my garage and we we're all just sitting around and we didn't want to say anything. And we we're just really sad. It was just very, very quiet. No one was there to guide us on how to navigate that sadness or what to do with that emotion. So, you know, being human, we, we can go two ways. We can try to pretend like it didn't happen and fake happiness, or we can have a productive conversation about it, figure out what to do next, acknowledge the things we feel and, and talk about how that experience affected us to help us move on. So of course, we didn't really have any leadership and I'm ashamed to say that I was a team captain and I did not lead my team like Kita here. We just ended up just trying to play poker and just trying to push through that moment. And all that does is just make you feel worse over time. But I remember not being able to sleep for a week because that last couple points just kept haunting me. Now, of course, I learned from that moment and I realized that I should never take a team lightly. But the fact that they have Kita here to help them process everything that happened is really special. And if you're a coach, if you're a captain, if you're a team leader out there, this is something that you have to learn how to do. Prepare your team to mentally be ready for a match, to stay focused during a match, and to make sure a team can properly process the result of a match, whether it's win or lose. Ooh. Now the emotions flow, and this is where people are now ready to cry. And that's okay. Oh, Kita's a senior. And these are underclassmen. So that was not the finals. Are they getting ready for another match here? <laughs> hey, you just gotta stick around and just enjoy it for a little bit. Oh, yeah, okay, these guys are like emotionally and physically exhausted. Man. Is he not already thinking about the next match? witness someone else having that moment. I wonder what he means by that. Oh, he's still looking at the ball marks. That's so cool. That's the day that he sunk one level deeper. Oh, is that possible? Is that possible for Hinata to sink deeper into volleyball? I'm, I'm just processing that image. Let's go back to that. Gosh, I've used the word beautiful so many times describing Haikyuu, but that's just the only word I can think about. These bruises usually represent pain, but now they represent two things. Hinata's dedication to his craft and also all the hard work that's paid off to an amazing victory. Something that is supposed to be painful. These Japanese people, man, they just they just know how to, to, to get you right here. Hinata, for once, is sitting still and not saying anything because he's so engrossed in savoring that moment. Now it's time to try some authentic Japanese snacks from one of my favorite partners, Sakurako. 
and Tokyo Treat. If you're not familiar with these two brands, this is a monthly subscription service where you get to enjoy authentic Japanese snacks from a more traditional or a more modern selection without having to travel all the way to Japan. Some of you have already tried some of these snacks and have had great experiences as well. First, we're gonna try out another snack from a more traditional selection, Sakurako. Ooh. I've just been loving all these little buns and squishy type breads that they've been having. Got lots of matcha flavored, fruit flavored. Can't wait to see what this one tastes like. Because I can't read Japanese, I have no idea what this flavor is, but some of you fans have been so great in explaining what the Japanese says. Man, I got tricked. Not in a bad way. I thought I was choosing a sweet bun, but this is actually a jelly. But I've been loving the jellies as well. So let's see what flavor this is. Orange, maybe peach. I always try to have you guys enjoy the opening sounds here. Gotta be careful when you open it because the liquid could spill out. I haven't eaten these since I was a kid. The trick is you gotta open it partially. Then you slurp it. So all the juices won't spill out. Yummy. It's not too sweet. Really, really soft jelly texture. It's like a nice light tangerine flavor. Pleasantly a surprise. I was hoping for a sweet bread, but I got a nice jelly. Now something from the modern selection. I love it when you got these American companies making products in other countries because they usually have local flavors. I know I can't read Japanese, but there's a little hint right there. Can't tell what that is. It almost looks like a bowl of cereal. Let's see. Actually a little harder to open things when I try to hold up to the mic. Just smells like salty Pringles. It's almost got like a hint of milk and it's still salty. It's not like a sweet chip. Wow. It's like mildly sweet, still mostly salty, but it's got like that nice interplay between those two flavors. If you want to try your own Sakurako or Tokyo Treat snacks and enjoy them with me as we watch Haikyuu together, you can get $5 off your first order when you use my discount code and link in the description box. I'm looking forward to see what snacks we're going to try next week. All right, I'm going to eat a couple more. These are really yummy here. I'm going to eat it while the bird's flying. You can just enjoy the crunchiness as we watch the bird fly together. Mmm. Bokuto. Oh, that means they get to play Bokuto. <laughs> this guy looks like Rintaro a little bit. Mm. Karasuno's tactic could be to throw Bokuto off his focus. Maybe Tsuki can get under his skin. There's that body language thing where they're reading each other's body language. <laughs> If that is girlfriend, for her to say I might become a Karasuno fan, that's messed up. Yeah, after you lose, you just don't feel like talking. I don't recognize this girl. Is this, this is this not Hinata's younger sister, is it? I feel like I should know this person. Let me watch that again. Am I supposed to know who this person is? Okay, so she's listening to... And this Nekoma they're up against seemed sort of bland. So maybe she's a Nekoma fan? I'm confused, but usually it's because I forget a lot from this anime. I think Inari was the snake. I think that was their mascot. Oh, 
Ooh, finally get to see themselves on TV. So exciting. Let's see how they talk about Karasuno. Oh, that's that quick play. Raider Captain Tanaka. <laughs> hmm, wonder who Suki is texting. Maybe his brother. <laughs> yes, they're showing the audience cheering. <laughs> yep. And when you see yourself on TV, you never look as good as you think. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> That's the complete opposite of Asahi's personality. Oh, they get the highlight. He not just dig. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> Did you see that Kageyama? This is great. Oh, I was really hoping that Coach Ukai was gonna be in the room enjoying that relaxed, chill moment with the team. You know, as a coach, it's important to maintain that relationship to have a healthy distance between your players. You wanna get to know them. Obviously, you wanna care for them and be close with them. But at the end of the day, you have to be the coach and the players have to be players. You're not there to be friends with them, at least not until they graduate. But there's moments where those lines can cross a little bit in a healthy way, like this during some important team bonding moments when you get to enjoy and savor that victory. You might not be that excited to watch your team on TV, but if you know your team is, you want to meet them where your player's at, right? Enjoy the things they enjoy, laugh with them, and let them see a different side of you just for a moment so you can build that camaraderie with them and they'll just trust you and respect you that much more when you're willing to connect with them on their level. But it's probably because Coach Ukais and Coach Tanaka, or not uh, Takeda, are studying game footage of Bokuto's team. <laughs> Maybe Bokuto's already thinking about the next game. Ah, <laughs> uh, so stressful that you gotta manage his emotions. And maybe Bokuto's just out here savoring his last tournament. Wait, this is only a second day? Man, that felt like a finals, that last match. Ooh, that determination. <laughs> He's like Bokuto's babysitter. <laughs> Ooh, who's complimenting him? Suga is. <laughs> I like these moments when the three seniors are talking. Oh, Tanaka's line shot. Yeah, everyone has their own interpretation of what common collected is. Yeah, you cannot forget Hinata's dig. <laughs> yeah, this is exactly what happens after a great match. You are just hanging out with the team, reflecting on who did what and who made the mistakes. 
に負けたくないけどさあいつらにも負けたくないそれですお前対抗して明日一回クロスとかやんなよ<笑>何言ってんだそんな度胸はないやれよそこは嘘でもあれよ<笑>あれってそうだあれ I like that dialogue. It just, it, it just makes me feel positive and want to be part of Karasuno. <laughs> Listening in on the girls' shower. So creepy. I appreciate that they don't show nudity in this one. I just think that would just ruin things. There's just a, a nice innocence and. Positivity in this anime. It definitely is more about the volleyball than just free boob shots. Although, are those butt cheeks? <laughs> Although, are he not just butt cheeks? Oh, Tsuki without his glasses. <laughs> oh, there's a Nekoma cat, right? Really, that's the same cat that shows up with Nekoma. Oh, I can't wait to see uh, Kenma's reaction to this all. Wait a minute, so Nekoma is not out. They were just watching and waiting for their next match. Oh, Kenma also gives his honest perspective. Like, maybe on paper they know that Inari is a better team, so they got lucky. Wait, are they playing? Are they playing Nekoma? I think they are. Uh oh. Happy music's playing. Does this mean this episode's already over and we don't get to watch their next match? There's Naka's sister. Still don't know who this little girl is. It's starting to feel like an ending already. Sadness. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be able to sleep like Hinata either. I think we have a different outro here. Or it just might be a reflection of the entire season four. Wait, I could have swore Kenma met Hinata much earlier. Oh, this maybe this is like a preview before they actually play each other because and this this animation looks a little different. I wonder if they reanimated because I don't remember Kenma having all those individual strands in his hair or Hinata having all those great shadows on his face that early in the season. And Hinata does look a little different. Or maybe I'm just used to the season four, season three animation. But it'd be way too expensive to to have to reanimate this whole sequence. Oh, we are recapping between some special moments between between Nikoma and and Karasuno. Hey, they both had their breakthrough moments. I remember Kenma having to work a little extra hard. And it looks like they're writing this into like a Hinata versus Kenma battle. Yeah, Nikoma watching that game end and say, let's go. Let's move on straight to business. And that beautiful sunrise. It would be hilarious if this was like the same ending for every episode and I just... 
don't know. The two teams are walking towards each other. The face off. I'm looking forward to see this strategy because I think they've been wanting to play each other, or at least Kenma has been wanting to face off against Hinata. Whose house is this? Volleyball poles? Grandpa Ukai. <laughs> the classic battle of the garbage dump. Crow and cat. Hmm, I wonder what he means by that. Maybe he, he's talking about how when he first started coaching, he expected people to play exactly like him. But realizing that their own individual people with individual specialties and talents. Wow, what a compliment. <laughs> You know what's funny is that usually not the best players usually make the best coaches because people who are great players, when things come naturally, they're not always aware of what they're doing. And so when they have to communicate that, they don't really know what they're doing with their body. But players who aren't as good as some of the star players, they have to fully analyze everything that they're doing just to get the similar result as those where it comes naturally. And so it's funny that Grandpa Ukai made that joke, but it's true. Like for me, I would consider myself not the top player and I've gotten to a certain level of coaching because I've had to be so analytical about what I'm doing and that's why it's a lot easier for me to communicate my thoughts and my system and my techniques because I've already thought through all of that. I remember asking one of my teammates in high school how he jumped so high. He was my height and I remember seeing him in flip-flops standing under the basketball rim. He could jump up with no warm-up and just grab the rim in flip-flops. It was mind-blowing. And I remember asking him, dude, how do you jump so high? Hoping that he would give me some type of knowledge. And he just said, I don't know, I just do. And then walked away. I was like, great. <laughs> that was super helpful. And I remember I vowed that day I would never be like that to other people. That if I figured out how to do something well, I would always try to share my knowledge because there's other people in my position that would appreciate that help. Because I definitely would appreciate that help. Even if he just said something like, you know, it came natural to me, but this is what I try to do for exercise or maybe try to jump like this. That would have been much better than just a douchey, eh, I don't know. Yeah, I can't stand douchebags. Mm. I wonder why Nikoma wants to beat them so badly. <laughs> Is this the official end? Thank you for watching. We are officially at the end. And if I remember correctly, I remember reading in the comments that someone said there's two OVA episodes that we can still enjoy. So this party is still going on. Still a couple more episodes we can watch before we resume. And I do have some ideas for my next Haikyuu reaction videos. If you guys remember from season two, I think that's when 243 came out. I do wanna watch at least the first episode of 243 just to see what it's like. There's some mixed reviews, but I wanna just give it a shot because I love volleyball and I would have never given Haikyuu a shot if it weren't for the pandemic. So I want to give 243 just one, one opportunity. So stay tuned for that. I'll probably react to that after the OVA episodes. I still can't believe that Karasuno won. I think I was betting against them because the road was just getting too good to their victory. But the way they told the story and how much tension there was, there's so many moments where it looked like Inari had control and then Karasuno would come back and then Inari would find a way to figure out what Karasuno was doing and then Karasuno would come back with some hustle plays. And then for this match, they threw in the luck factor. A couple teams had some dribblers, another defender had some lucky digs that led to a point and it pretty much showed all the elements necessary to win at a very high level. I'm really curious to see what Karasuno's game plan is for preparing against Nekoma because Kenma is a very, very, very smart setter and very deceptive. I think Atsumu is a little bit more physical and just very gifted, 
almost like Kagayama on steroids, but Kenma is a gamer. He is physically limited, but he always finds ways to win and to get an edge, and that's pretty special. So we'll just have to see which team is hungrier. Don't forget to try your own Sakurako and Tokyo Treat snacks. And then get another crunchy snack here. If you've missed any of my other reaction videos, you can catch up by checking out this playlist right here. And I know you're gonna like this video right here.